Hi, everyone out there. So welcome to Challenges and Misconceptions. My name is Wendy Potmer Breen, and I am the Clinical Manager of Implementation Services here at Avisure. You know, there are always challenges when implementing new programs. But for the Avisure Telesitter program, there's a couple of them that actually are brought up a lot post go live. Um, and they're not even just post go live during our meetings with our um, with the customers. It's even as we do on site visits. If you attended any of the session, sessions yesterday, you probably would have heard the word communication a lot, because communication can really impact many aspects of your Avisure program, such as satisfaction, staff buy in, and even utilization. So, hang on. See here. Um, the problem here that we're not able to move the slides. There we go. So the number one challenge that we hear a lot about are um, is communication. Now communication can be a two part. Sorry, challenge. It's not just with the observer. It can also be with the RN as well and their communication to the observer. So. Thinking about that here a little bit more, if we have decrease in observer communication to the patients and family um, and the bed staff, bedside staff, we can also have possibly a decrease in what? Patient satisfaction, family satisfaction, and staff satisfaction. Now, increasing the RN communication to the observer can also improve the observer satisfaction with their staff, with their role as the observer. But ultimately, this will also improve patient safety. So let's take a look a little bit more at just the observer communication and some of the things that um, you can do as a monitor staff manager to help improve that. So again, over time, I don't know why this happens, but monitor staff can become a little bit maybe complacent um, with their role and the communication starts to decrease. And we do hear this a lot from the clinical leads, from the bedside staff when we're on site. And even looking at the ORNA data, we can see from the time of go live, they have a decrease in their verbal interactions with patients. So sometimes you'll even hear when we're on site from the nursing staff is that they never even hear them watching them. So what can we do, right? We want to encourage the monitor staff to engage more frequently with their patients, whether that be talking to them and introducing themselves as they um, start their shift. Maybe um, introducing themselves to the uh, patient's family member when they walk in the room. Um, just talking to them throughout the day. And if you're not seeing this happen, maybe just take a step back and think, if my observer was a one-to-one -one sitter in a patient's room, would they not talk to that patient all day? No, they wouldn't. They would be talking to that patient. They would be introducing themselves when they start their shift. They would be talking to them and checking in on them throughout the day. When, when the family members walk in, they would introduce themselves to the family. So just because they're not physically present as they would be as a one-to-one, -one, they need to be virtually present and they need to be engaging with that patient. By regularly talking to the patient, just so you know, the patient becomes more apt <clears throat> to listen to their voice. So when they do need to redirect, they will listen and they will hear them. So another thing to think about with the observer is that Avisure is a proactive, interactive tool, right? More communication allows the monitoring staff to be proactive in anticipating patients' behavior needs. These really need Um, prior to the staff arm, and if they can do that, they will reduce the staff fatigue in this field. It is known in obvious research that when there are more verbal interactions with patients, the number of stat alarms decrease. There's like, it's like a vicious cycle almost. We find that the monitor staff start decreasing their verbal interactions, and then we start seeing them use the prompts and the stat alarms to redirect the patients. Then the nurses start to complain that all they hear are the stat alarms. So then the monitor staff become a little more maybe timid in using the stat alarms and now they're starting to call the nurse 
all the time. So we really want to encourage them to use that verbal interaction, that verbal redirect first. And hopefully the more that they use it, the less they'll need to use the stat alarm. But I always wanna make sure we point out to the monitor staff too, never be afraid to use that stat alarm. That is your tool. You are the observer. You're the one keeping that patient safe. All eyes are, you know, basically your eyes are all on the patients. I had a monitor staff one time tell me, when in doubt, stat it out. And I love that saying. It is so important to make sure that they're using that when they truly need to. But start using your voice. Communicate with that patient more often. Now, another thing that we can do with the observers is really help them um, increase their communication with the nursing staff. Be more proactive when staff walk into that room. So think about it. If I'm walking into that room as a nurse and the monitor staff has this patient of mine, why don't the monitor staff interact with me there? Instead of me taking out my phone, dialing the number to the monitor station to talk to the monitor staff. I believe it was in a Porsche yesterday for to admit a patient. This is the same thing. Let's decrease those steps that it takes for the nurses to call the monitors to give report or to let them know they're going to need privacy. So monitor staff, we really want them to take that initiative and ask the questions when they can if there's somebody present in that room. Now, obviously, they're watching 12 patients, maybe 16 patients. So every time somebody walks in the room, that's not going to be possible. But start doing this at, you know, with one patient at a time and making that maybe that interaction, that touch base with the patient and the nurse, um, that's going to be really valuable. And I think you're going to start seeing a, a, a lot more satisfaction from your frontline staff, but definitely your patients and the patient's family. Now, one of the things I want to point out, too, is we actually have tools that you can use to help your observers um, improve their communication. One of the great things that we do already have is um, it's a scripting document. And the, script, the scripting document that Avisher can provide you has all these different scenarios that your monitor staff can use to communicate with the patient. Sometimes they don't really know how to start. So by giving them this document, maybe posting it at the monitor station, letting them kind of use these scripted um, scenarios to help them become more comfortable communicating. You know, sometimes there's, there's good communicators. Everyone has, a, there's good communication, so, sorry. There's good communicators and there's also people who are not good at communicating. So maybe instead, maybe role play with those, um, those monitor staff members of yours that are not the greatest at communicating. The more they do it, the more they'll become comfortable with it. And another tool that you can use as a monitor staff manager is the dashboard. Now the dashboard is a 24 hour snapshot of what's happening in your program. But maybe when you come into your um, to work, pull up the dashboard and take a look and see what's going on with the verbal interactions that you can um, see where they're at. Maybe take a little snapshot of it and come back a few hours later and take a look at it again. Hopefully you're starting to see those numbers improve. And if not, you can always go and work with that monitor staff that day and help them to help improve their communications or their touch bases with the patient. And finally, we always have ORNA. So if you are an ORNA customer, you can actually look at the trends. You can start seeing how well you're doing with your um, verbal interactions with patients. So the number of um, uh, patient um, verbal interactions per patient day. <clears throat> but not only can you look and see how well your hospital, how you're doing at your hospital, you can look at the comparison hospitals and see what the average is. What is the national average for um, the number of times it's per patient day for verbal interactions are? So if you can use these three tools to actually help improve your communication from the observer to the patient and family and to the nurses. <clears throat> so now let's look at, excuse me, <clears throat> the nurse to observer communication. So nurses really need to give that detailed report with communicating um, instructions to the monitor staff, especially at admission, when something changes and when a new nurse is taking over at shift change. So many times when adverse events happen and the monitor staff will write and put in the software, I never knew they had a Foley or an IV. So it is so important to make sure we're getting all the community, all, all the information on the patient that they're Monitor staff keeps somebody's they
this, like again, the uh, <clears throat> more information you give them, the better. <clears throat> thing to think about too is maybe something changes. Maybe the patient's going down for um, to get a pick line put in. Make sure that you're telling the monitor staff when they return where the pick line is. Again, they can't keep something safe if they don't know it exists. Now, the next one is the nurse, um, when a new nurse is taking over at shift change. Now, that is always a tricky one. If I can suggest anything, it would be to make sure that the oncoming monitor staff know the nurse's name and the phone number so that they can get a hold of them if they need to quickly. But here you kind of have to figure out what works best for your institution. I have found that it seems like the offgoing shift is the best to get the report and report it to the oncoming shift. I remember starting my shift at 7 a.m. There's a lot going on. I'm just trying to get report from the nurses. Um, and now I have a monitor staff trying to call and get report. So maybe if the offgoing shift can be the ones getting report, giving the, the, the monitor staff you know, that information and vice versa, right? Them giving the information to the nurses of what they've seen on their shift. And then that'll help if maybe then for the, on, for the oncoming shift to get report later, you know, give them their updates. One of the other things that we hear from the monitor staff when we go on site is they don't really feel like they're part of the team. So please encourage your nurses to introduce the monitor staff as they are part of that care team. Just as they would introduce themselves and the nursing assistant working with them, make sure they're introducing the monitor staff. You know, I've seen places um, on their whiteboards, if you have a whiteboard in the patient's room, add an additional section for telesitter so you can include that patient's or that um, monitor staff's name. This really promotes them feeling again like they're part of the team. Now the next one is new to me. I actually stole this from one of my customers. Um, and if you're watching, you probably know who you are. Um, I was floored with this. I thought, wow, did, why didn't I think of this sooner? This is a great idea. Nurses really need to set their expectations with the observer at the beginning of their shift. So think about this. I'm the nurse, I've had this patient for two straight days and I'm on my third 12 hour shift with this patient on a telesitter. I might be more lax on certain behaviors that this patient is doing and tell the monitor staff that I don't really need them to call me for everything or stat alarm for everything. But the oncoming shift who's never had this patient is gonna be like, oh no, uh -uh. I want you to call me for this, this, and this. So again, making sure your nurses set their expectation with the monitor staff. I think this is, a, I just wish I would have thought of this sooner because I think this is a, just a great idea. And the same goes for a novice nurse versus an expert nurse. We all have our own expectations. So encourage them to do that. This is gonna really improve patient safety, staff satisfaction for both the monitor staff and the nursing staff. Well, challenge number two, discharging patients on a telesitter to a skilled nursing facility or a long-term acute care facility. You know, we do, um, a, I think, a great job at Go Live with our different classes, and one of them is a transition and care class. However, I feel like the case managers and the liaisons for these um, facilities don't always feel like the telesitter is gonna affect them as much until it does. And it usually does after go live when we're trying to get a patient to one of these facilities and the liaisons are giving a pushback. So I think the best thing that we can do, if, if you haven't gone live yet, really encourage the case managers and the liaison for your surrounding facilities to attend the transition and care class. But if you're already live, let's go ahead and let's get these case managers, let's educate them and arm them with the best information on, about the telesitter so that they can really give the information to the liaisons. One of the things you can do, again, if you're not live or if you are live with our, with our program, is send the introductory letter to the skilled nursing facilities and long-term acute care facilities. Those, send it out to them, we have it available to you, and you can use this letter to start educating and making them aware that this program is coming to your hospital. The other thing you can do is host a learning opportunity. So maybe do an open house, bring them to the hospital, Give them, a, do an open house at the, at the monitor station, which I think is really valuable. This is. 
But the next thing to do is show celebration. Let's start talking about this, right? A one-to-one letter is truly one-to-one ratio. You know, it is patient sitter, but a telesitter typically a one to twelve, possibly one to sixteen. So there's a difference right there. The other big difference is the location, right? An arms reach if I'm a one sitter, if I'm sitting at that bedside. But a telesitter, they're remote. They cannot reach out and touch that patient. And I think another really important thing to make sure that everyone is aware of, case managers and liaison, is we have a policy, the hospitals have a policy surrounding telesitter. There are certain patients that cannot be placed on a telesitter. And the criteria, I think everyone thinks of the falls. Oh, they're watching them for falls. Oh my goodness, there's so many reasons to watch or patient on a telesitter. You know, safety of lines and two, delirium, elopement, aggressive behaviors. It's not just about falls. So what other things can we do to help our case managers? Well, here we are again with that dashboard, right? The dashboard is key. Give the case managers access to the dashboard. This is a great tool. It provides 24-hour view of the patient's activity. This is Transparency at its finest, if you ask me. What better way to look and see what's happening with this patient? You can see all the stat alarms in the last 24 hours. You can see all the verbal interactions. There's so much information here that can tell you if this patient is ready for transfer or not even close. But the other thing you can do is talk to the monitor staff. So there's a lot of information they can provide. They can provide, especially the reasons for monitoring. And if the reasons for monitoring have changed, because even though the dashboard will give you the, um, the primary reason we're monitoring this patient, we know that that can change in a day or so. So the one thing our software doesn't allow is for you to change the primary reason. But the nurses still can let the monitor staff know, and they actually can put that in their side notes. So as a case manager, um, make sure you're asking that. The primary reason, reason here lists elopement. Is that still the case? Maybe it's not. Maybe the elopement is no longer the reason we're monitoring that patient. They're alert, they're oriented, but they still have an IV. They're on telemetry. They can't be discharged and <clears throat> they can't be without an IV until they're discharged. So maybe this patient truly is appropriate to be discharged to one of the surrounding facilities, post-acute care. The other thing that you can ask the monitor staff as well is, is this patient directable? Are they redirectable? Um, how many calls do you, have you had to make to the nurse regarding this patient? What's the current condition, current needs? Now, I did just talk about verbal interactions, right? Remember, if you are starting to really improve those verbal, intera those verbal interactions with um, your monitor staff to the patient, make sure you're really communicating that too to the um, case managers. Like, yes, I've talked to this patient 15 times a day, but one of them was a redirection. And that was just to use the call light. Everything else has just been me chiming in and talking to them. So again, getting that full picture is using that dashboard and then talking to the monitor staff. That will really be the full picture. And this, again, is transparency, trans, transparency at its finest. I mean, what kind of information can you ask for? More information could you ask for? 24 hours, right? Remote observation of a patient. So again, arm the uh, case managers with having access to the dashboard. And I mentioned this earlier too about discharging patients to the skilled nursing facility or long-term acute care. Let's take a look at this on a case-by-case -case basis. So again, we have a shared goal. The nurses want the same thing as the um, liaisons, right? We want this patient to transfer safely and timely. Again, remember, this is more than a fall prevention program. And this is also not solely used for to replace the one-to-one -one sitters. We're using the telesitter for many reasons. And the hospitals have basically another tool to use to keep patients safe. So it's just an addition, right? It's an addition. So here I have a bed alarm. Now I'm adding a telesitter because why not? I have it. I want to use it. And more so than ever right now, we are at a staffing crisis. And if we can utilize the telesitter, 
that I can know that I have an extra set of eyes on my patient, oh my goodness, please let me. Let's keep them on the telesitter so we get this safe transition. Remember too, unsuccessful candidates, they're still gonna require a one-to-one -one sitter. So we don't even have to worry about that, right? These patients are those patients that do not need a one-to-one -one sitter. And again, talking about the dashboard, it really can improve the transparency between facilities. And that is also a great tool for assessing appropriate transition. And most of all, again, look at this, um, look at these patients and evaluate them on a case-by-case -case basis. You know, maybe this one patient is inappropriate, but maybe the other two or three are. So first of all, saying no, we're not doing it, they're on a telesitter, take them off, they need to be off 24 hours. Again, case by case. So let's start doing it that way first. And then next up, the misconceptions. Averse events. I have a telesitter now and the averse events, they're not gonna happen. Again, a telesitter is an adjunct measure to your hospital's current policies and processes for patient safety. I think that's just something we have to always remember. It's that extra thing that we get to have at the hospital to keep those patients safe. But if an adverse, hap if an adverse event happens, and I don't like that I wrote this is necessarily not a bad thing. Yes, adverse events are bad things. We don't want them to happen. Wouldn't that be a wonderful world if adverse events didn't happen? But they do. But now, if an adverse event happens on a telesitter, it's witnessed. It's, an, it's a witnessed event. How many people have unfortunately right here? But now, we actually have another set of eyes that can help put that story together. We have more information on that adverse event. Information that cause analysis to why it happened. Think about the patient that's confused that gets out of bed and falls, who doesn't have a telesitter. I walk home, I don't know if that person's hit their head or not. Well, CT here, but maybe the person, the same patient, the telesitter, the same thing happened and they hit their head, or they hit their head, and their staff able to tell you. So it's witness. Uh, see, uh, um, <clears throat> Again, when adverse events happen, this can also learn from them. It promotes productivity to prevent adverse events in the future. And again, one more thing to talk about, bringing in that communication piece. Adverse events can increase by nursing staff. This is why it is so important for the staff to communicate with the nurses when something happened. Have that conversation, it's really easy. But the nurses would be much better know they were watching, the event happened, they did everything they can. Again, keeping that communication line open. Something else that I didn't put on here was, we need to think about the monitor staff too when the adverse event happens, right? I mean, they have to feel awful as well. So let's make sure we're having the conversation with them. I mean, they tried to do everything they could, but they honestly couldn't reach out and touch that patient, right? So the adverse event occurred. They do feel bad too. So let's make sure that we are talking with them about that and making them understand that these things will happen. Um, as long as they were doing their job, that's all that matters. And then I think the next misconception that we do hear a lot is the frontline staff will say, oh, we're the ones that are being watched. So continue to educate that frontline staff Monitor staff responsibility is really, it's to watch the patients, not the staff. We've got 12 patients, 16 patients. They're busy. They're watching a lot of people. They're not watching the staff. They're focused on the patients. And remind them, too, that the monitor staff can only hear in one room at a time. We talk about this on our Go Live Week for Education over and over, but I feel like it just becomes, it becomes forgotten. So when we come back on site, we end up bringing this up again, and I always hear, oh, I did not know that. So please, just keep reminding them, they can only hear one room at a time. But what we do find is that sometimes the monitor staff, they do tend to chime in if they notice something maybe that shouldn't be happening. Maybe the nurse didn't wash her hands. It's a, just an example. And the monitor staff will chime in and say something. 
we want to make sure that the monitor staff know that really isn't the correct way to do it. They need to make sure that they are talking to their manager and then their manager can go to the nurse's manager and discuss it. Because when those things happen, any of those um, chime-ins from the monitor staff kind of saying something to the nurse or maybe the PCA or nursing assistant, that will also decrease that buy-in and making them feel like they're watched. So really promote them to discuss this with their manager if they have any concerns. So that really is the end of my presentation. I did want to point out one more thing that I did forget to mention when it comes to the long-term care um, facilities. Sometimes the word telesitter, they hear sitter. And so maybe remote monitoring um, when we're speaking to the liaisons. Because I think the minute they hear the word sitter, regardless if it's attached to tele, they are like, nope, they can't come. So just another thought there. Um, we only have a few minutes left, and um, I think there was just a couple of questions. Actually, no, this was already answered, so that was great. Um, I don't know if there's anyone that wants to put any questions in the chat or if there's anything um, else that I'm trying to think that I didn't say that I wanted to say. But I think what we can do is we can end a little bit early. Oh, I did get one more question, so hold tight on that one. And it's coming. <laughs> How can, oh, Avisure can actually, um, well, there's a couple of things we've done. We've actually recently had a transition in care webinars um, for a full week. We um, implemented that and we sent it out to all the different um, hospitals. But you could also reach out to your clinical program specialist. They can really set you up with some of the tools that you would need. Um, and Again, we can look into seeing maybe we could do some more of these different webinars to help get more of the um, liaisons on board um, and attending these. Oh, and this other question was, how have different organizations adopted a new term in place of telesitter? Yes, I, I could think of some right now, but it's remote video monitoring, um, safety attendance. I'm trying to think of a few more. Um, anybody else want to chime in in the chat, that would be great because I'm kind of at a blank um, or a loss. But video monitoring, remote monitoring, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> video safety monitoring, perfect. Well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. Um, and it looks like I think I have one more question here. What are the misconceptions about hosted applications versus those run in-house? I'm not quite sure if I understand that question. So what we can do is um, we can look at that a little bit more and get back to the person that actually asked that question. But I think we need to get um, to uh, go ahead and end um, this presentation. Um, next up after the break, though, is a good one. It's keeping suicidal patients safe virtually. I want to thank you all for attending, and I look forward to seeing you all at our next presentation. Have a great rest of your day, y'all.